Welcome to the Seller Roundtable e-commerce coaching and business strategies with Andy Arnott and Amy Wees. Hello, everyone. This is Amy Weiss with a special episode of the Seller Roundtable. We're going to do an extra today with my guest, Douglas Levin, and he is going to tell us all about how he got started on his Amazon journey, as well as the importance of building a brand off of Amazon. And I know so many of us are kind of experiencing this, especially in the later years, in the last couple of years on Amazon, it's gotten really, really busy, a lot of competition. So it's more important than ever to take our brands off of Amazon. So welcome, Douglas. Thank you for being here. Oh, oh, thank you so much for having me, Amy. It's great to be here. Well, boy, why don't you tell our audience a little bit more about you and kind of your journey leading up to this episode. So, you know, how did you get started? What's your background? Where do you live? You know, whatever you want to tell us, you, you know, that would be great. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, uh, I guess uh, I, I lived in Chicago all my life. Um, I was, uh, one, like, I was a musician, so... Ever since the time I was 13, I was really into music. Um, so I would uh, pretty much play in bands all through like grade school, through high school, all that kind of stuff. And I ended up getting to be like a professional musician where I was doing that. Like uh, every day I would, I would work, I'd play in original bands, I'd play in cover bands. Um, I did like, it's called live band karaoke, where like uh, you have the, the person comes up on stage and, I, and you have the backing band of like a real band playing behind you. Um, so that was fun for a little while. And uh, I, I wasn't really making much money though, as most musicians know. Um, and at that point I was getting a little burned out on playing Don't Stop Believing for like the 50,000th time. Um, so I, I had come across- It's a good song though. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's a great song the first, what, 10, 15 times you hear it when you, when you have to play it for the fourth time that night, it starts to get a little irritating. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, so I was doing that and I was paying the bills, I was doing fine, um, but I wasn't really um, doing anything else, but I had good credit. So I, I had come across something called like miles and points. and I was doing some of that stuff like in my spare time because I had good credit. So like I would then from that I was getting like, all right, um, I, I can get cash back or I can get uh, go on trips or any of those kinds of things. So that was cool. And um, I was still not really making much money. And I was reading like some of the blogs that talked about uh, uh, miles and points and how to do all that stuff. And I ended up uh, coming across somebody who was talking about how they're getting free points by like selling stuff on Amazon, that kind of thing. So uh, I was like, okay, I, I can start to do something and, and get like free points. I don't know anything. I don't know the first thing about business. Like I, I sleep all day until like two or three in the afternoon. Um, I'm around lazy musicians all day, but like, all right, sure. I'll, I'll give it a shot. And, um, and, and that's how I kind of came from like being a musician to like my first introduction to like starting to do stuff on Amazon. So. I love that. Uh, we just got started in points. We took the opposite journey, right? Like we got serious <laughs> in e-commerce and then all of our buddies that, you know, were spending a million dollars on advertising every year. They just had that on their favorite points, credit cards. And they were basically like first class everywhere, traveling around the world, whole family going on trips all because they figured out how to, you know, put their credit card on their advertising, you know, for Google ads, Amazon, PPC, and, you know, Andy, our, our podcast partner, he is, uh, he's one of those that just really enjoys all of the rewards from points. But I can see how if you don't have a way to flip that money fast, if you can't keep buying things with it. Um, and I know, I've been on some of those points blogs and stuff and I, I know like some people kind of move the money around and they play different games with it. But I can imagine that uh, if you don't have a, like a large income source coming in, uh, it might be hard to make a living doing that plus travel and do everything that you want to do. So very cool that you did it the opposite way. You figured out this points miles thing 
And then you're like, all right, this is a way I can push more money through this <laughs> awesome funnel and, and get it moving. So very, very cool. And you were a drummer, right? Did you yes. play any other instruments? Um, I played a little bit of guitar, a little bit of keyboards. I was more kind of self-taught. Like um, when I was probably like, what, six, seven, eight years old, like I, my mom would send me to like what piano lessons and guitar lessons and those kinds of things. But I hate it. I, I'll admit I hated it. It was like, like when you're a kid and you're like forced to go to something and it's not something you really want to do. Like you're like, all right, when's this over? Can I go play? Can I do whatever? <laughs> right. Um, I would, I honestly wish though I would have, like been more into it at the time because like I, I ended up learning all that stuff on my own like I ended up getting keyboard guitar bass all that kind of stuff but I think if I could have like done the work then in terms of like stuck with it uh, I, pro I probably would have been a much better musician like I, I, was, I was I wasn't bad obviously I'm getting paid I was getting paid to play drums I did session work I toured um, like was in musicals all that kind of stuff but I would have, uh, like everybody else, you wish you would have done some things differently, right? Um, yeah, kind of do you sing as well? No, no, I, uh, you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, apparently yeah. you have good rhythm, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah I uh, grew up uh, doing music. I graduated high school a year early. I played eight instruments and I'm a singer. And you, so it's like one of those weird things that most people don't know about me. But the reason that I didn't choose to do music as a career is I really didn't want it to become a job. It was something that I really enjoyed. And, um, and I didn't, you know, I had friends that had bands and like one of my best friend, her mom had a band and we would go and help like set everything up every weekend and take it down. And we would be there for these three, four hour sets. And it just, it was fun in the beginning. It was a little adventure, but then after a while, like yeah I don't want to do that for the rest of my life so I always I still continued when I was in the military I would sing at ceremonies you know Star Spangled Banner that kind of stuff and um and I sing at weddings and and funerals and you know uh but uh ultimately it's it's just for fun it's just something that I enjoy so I love that you gave it a go and that you had a lot of fun with it but um, ultimately, you found yourself on another path. So speaking of paths, let's talk about Amazon. How did you learn about Amazon? When did you first learn about it? Well, well, um, I can't remember the blog exactly. I think, um, yeah, it, there's so many, like, like, like in the Amazon world where there's like 5 million Facebook groups and blogs and all of the other stuff. It's the same thing with Miles and Points. I'm sure it still is now. But um, like I ended up coming across somebody and they were talking specifically um, about like reselling stuff and it was like on the arbitrage side of it where um, I want to say they were talking about like electronics or something like hey here's iPads and all of this other stuff and and hey I'm, it's not costing me anything and I'm getting all of this stuff so I mean I I didn't really know what I was doing with any of that stuff but um, they're like oh yeah, well this seems cool um, and then from that point I was like all right uh, I'll I've got a whole bunch of stuff around my house and I'll try some of that kind of thing. So it's not going to cost me anything. I mean, I was a musician, I was making like 18 grand. I didn't really have any money. So um, I would have some electronic stuff in like my closet or something that I wasn't using that was like new that like maybe I got as a gift or something and I never used. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'll try that. And I did merchant fulfill because I didn't know any better, I guess at the time. Um, and like when I was trying that stuff, uh, I remember there was like a, 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 a post office, like probably like a block away from me. So I would make that track trying to like go there with whatever it was that sold like every day. I had no system in place. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I have no idea if I was making money, losing money on that stuff at all. Um, but, but it was cool. It was like, all right, I'm starting to understand this a little bit in terms of the arbitrage side. And, and, and that's kind of how, how I started in the game. And then like after that, I was like, all right, um, is there a better way to do this so I can actually like make money and not be putting myself through, through a daily jaunt to the, to the post office whenever someone was buying. And then I, obviously I came up with FBA from there and, uh, and kind of went through that, that whole path that a lot of people do on the FBA side. Right? Yeah. I, I started the same way, just flipping things. I saw that whole sell it on Amazon button when I was <laughs> trying to, I was trying to buy textbooks when I was in college in 2007 and you know I saw that button sell it and I was like ooh ding 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 I could sell my textbooks too 
oh wait, I wonder how fast I can, you know, flip these around, buy used, and sell them when I'm done with them. And so that's kind of when I learned about it. And then I kind of like you, had no idea what I was doing. I just, <laughs> you know, making my own packaging. I would like take old boxes and cut them apart. And, um, you know, that was in 2007. And you got started in 2014 is when you yep. kind of just, and you know, I love when people get started with arbitrage because you really learn about the categories on Amazon. You learn about the market. You learn what sells. You learn what doesn't sell. <laughs> you, you learn all about the process of shipping it in. Like all of these people that start with private label, if you make a mistake in private label, you are really in trouble because you could lose your life savings, right? You, you spend $10,000 on inventory you paid way too much for because you're just doing this for the first time. You don't really understand how the profitability works with e-commerce. You send it in and you know it doesn't sell because there's a million other competitors. You didn't know you're actually doing white label and not private label at all. <laughs> and, you know, and then you spend way too much on advertising because what the heck, who even mentioned advertising in this Amazon <laughs> course, you know? And then before you know it, you're like, I'm out of money. I can't afford to do inventory or I have a hijacker on my listing. And meanwhile, the people over here in arbitrage land are like, okay, I made a mistake. I bought something from Walmart that I couldn't sell, but I just returned it. And uh, now I'm over here flipping these things and I can sell Nike shoes now. And, you know, and they're learning all these things and they're discovering all of these cool opportunities as they start selling in these markets. And so whenever somebody comes to me that wants to do private label and has never sold on Amazon before, my advice is always go to Walmart, find something you can resell, send it in, that's your assignment. <laughs> because that's the best way to learn. Would you agree? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, like, I know um, uh, on my end, I'm the same way in terms of like, if you think about it realistically, if you're learning private label and you're getting started with Amazon, you're learning two separate things at the same time that are like huge, huge product projects, right? I mean, like, like just that process that I know, like I went through in terms of Amazon was like a big process, like of learning simple stuff that you take for granted now. And like on the private label side, yeah, I def definitely agree on that. Like, like there's people that have been selling private label for years. I still don't know what they're doing. And, and you're going to go and, and learn both Amazon and private label at the same time. I mean, I, I, I don't recommend it either. And, and on the plus side, you go the arbitrage route is you get the immediate gratification too. Like you, like I know there's a lot of times you'll, you'll find something in a store, you'll, you, you'll ship it in like FBA and like a day or two later, it's already sold. So like you're getting that money back, where it's like private label, you're putting in all of this work and you may not even know for like what, three or four months, if something is a viable idea, if it's gonna work. And then even then you've gotta like take that money and start to reinvest it back into your next set of inventory. Um, versus right. like when, when, you're, when you're to the point that you know Amazon and you come up with a great idea, that's great. But if you're starting off and it, I mean, you want to get those quick wins with arbitrage to like help your mindset, help, help get you going in the right direction. And I mean, that's where arbitrage is really great. And I know people that are still doing arbitrage, like they're selling like a hundred, 200,000 a month and that's their thing. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's awesome for them. I, I just got really sick of it after a while. Like I, I, did and I not always like say it. like, you know, it doesn't matter what model you choose as long as you're running a business and not a charity. So <laughs> as long as you are making money, I'm not mad at you. So if you want to do arbitrage, more power to you. That's no problem, you know. So when did you decide that you were going to start on this private label journey? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So um, so when I was doing arbitrage, I, I'll admit, like, going to Walmart, like, like we're talking about, um, going to, like, 10 of them a day or something, that's not what I find fun. Um, like finding deals and stuff it, like I know a lot of people think that's cool and that's great but that's not something I like to do I'd rather stay at home I'd rather like like be on my computer or whatever it was um, and and I was also honestly worried in terms of suspension like because you get like you, you hear all the people with IP claims and you sold new, as new and all those kinds of things so I first from there went into wholesale and I ended up going with that route for, for a, a while and I got good at it um, but even with wholesale, I was getting, I get exclusives here and there and those kind of things. And I'd make uh, enough money at it that it was 
successful and it was uh, enough income that I could live off of it. My wife could live off of it working. But I ended up having issues where like there was Amazon issues with like, like a $20,000 shipment that just was a huge pain. Um, I woke up to 10 used sold as new complaints on wholesale new accounts. Um, so I was like, all right, I, I want something else that I can control something where it, um, I'm not completely relying on Amazon. Yes. I want to, I want to build a brand like, and, and the way we did it was a little different in terms of it was more of a passion project, but, um, like, like I wanted something that way where it's not, not the way I was going. Cause, cause I was stressed out in terms of, even on the wholesale side where you think everything is rainbows and it's awesome and, and you got no issues. I, mean, I was still having issues and it's like, all right, well, I, I want to see what I can do on the private label side. And that, that's how I ended up coming up with where we, we went. And, um, and then with that, it was just like, it wasn't the typical way I had learned about private label. Like, like I'd taken courses, I'll admit I've taken like probably 5 million courses um, at this point. But so I, I knew like what to do, but um, uh, we came across our product just because it was like something that I was talking to my wife about and she was like, this isn't really out there. And, and I've been trying to find something and it doesn't work. So um, then at that point, my thought was, well, I mean, we're doing okay. Let's figure out a way to do it. And, th and then from there, I started on the private label journey. and figure it and try to figure it all out. So, you know, our episode today is all about the importance of building a brand off of Amazon and how you kind of came to that discovery. And your in your bio, it's pretty cool. It says that you became obsessed with chatbots and you built up a Facebook messenger list of over 20,000 subscribers. And that helped you get 20,000 in monthly sales. Well, we didn't talk about profit, but monthly sales, that's pretty good within the first three months of your launch. So, you know, and that really kind of helped you start realizing, wow, I have something here. I have a brand that I, can, I now have this list of 20,000 people. And that became a powerful thing because you didn't need Amazon, right? Amazon, awesome sales channel, very trusted but now you have this ability to reach out to these subscribers. So tell us a little bit more about this process of how you learned about chatbots and how you decided to start trying them out and start using them with your brand. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, we had come up with the idea for our first brand and our first product. And I guess luckily in retrospect, at the time it was a pain, um, our first, product had to go through like all of these different iterations in terms of going back and forth with the manufacturer just because there was like one thing about it that just wasn't working. Um, so I had thought that, oh, it will be ready to go in like what, three months or something and we'll be good to go and launch in like five or six months or something. And then it kept going back and forth and like it ended up being like nine, 10 months, something like that. So I was stuck at that point and I was trying to figure out like, all right, well, what am I going to do? We're still going back and forth. And I had heard a lot about chatbots. I had heard like, oh, these are like amazing open rates. It's the future of, of marketing. It's the future of everything. But I didn't really know much about it at the time. So I kind of used that as, a, as like, all right, I can't do much on the private label side right now, but I can start to learn about this. So I ended up kind of digging in real deep on like, like Facebook groups, um, friends of mine that were really good at it. Um, like I've always said, like, I'm not a smart person. I, I don't claim to be, I don't claim to be the smartest guy in the room at all, but I, I want to be around people that are smarter than me and I can learn from. Um, so I would basically try and do as much of that as I could. And, um, from there I just got obsessed with it. Like, um, uh, I, like while we were waiting, that's, that's when I started like to build up our list. And I, I, I figured out like, from a few people that I, I admired and that were mentors, the idea that that chatbots themselves, for them to really work, you have to treat it differently than email because email is like that whole one to many approach. And the great thing about chatbots is you can have a conversation with them. So I quickly, like whenever I, I was trying to set something up with many chat where I would try and figure out oh, what's the best way to do this, I would think about how I want that conversation to go, how it can basically be my voice that's coming across so I can start to learn more about them, like all of the basic marketing things that you've probably heard before, but try and put that into play 
on a, on the ManyChat platform so you can take advantage of it as much as you can and start to build that bond with, with your potential customer. So give um, us an example of a, um, a conversation that you would have to start building. So this was before you even had a product, you were waiting, you were developing your product, getting it, planning to launch it. So give us an example of how you reached out to, how you got people to, first of all, click into your messenger, yeah. to opt into your messenger, and then what kind of conversation did you have? Right. So um, the way I did it, I don't know if I would really recommend or not. I mean, like since, since then I've learned um, a lot of different ways to do like lead magnets, but I had done like, all right, um, like a giveaway kind of a thing where it's like, hey, you want your chance to win whatever it was. It was like $100 or something worth of something that was related to our niche. And um, now I think if I would, was to do it, I'd probably tweak it a little bit just in terms of trying to get higher quality traffic. But it still worked in terms of getting us a lot of sales and, and other parts. So it was great. Um, and then we would get them into the bot. And obviously, like the, the, the messenger is always changing. But at the time, um, you could follow up with like um, uh, the, within the 24 hours, you could also follow up with a plus one at the time. And you could do like all of these sequences after you got them onto your, on, into your like bot and onto your list. So we would get them onto, the, onto our, our messenger list. And then we would immediately start to have the conversation of like, all right, um, since we knew that they were our ideal customer, um, I would try and figure out like, what are their pain points? Like, what are they having issues with? And does it align with my, maybe my products? Where like, um, like my, my product can be the solution to their problem. And then from there, we would kind of take them on the journey and start to, and, and the great thing uh, that we would do in terms of what, with how chatbots work is that you can segment them as well. So if they had a specific kind of pain point, then that would help us to figure out like maybe what kind of content um, will help them in the future so we can start to give some more value. Or, or as we're starting to think of more products in the future, well, this is a problem they're having, then maybe that's something we want to do in the future. So it's, it's the idea that there's always more data that you're acquiring from this. Um, so I would just take them through that path. And then uh, it, it would kind of snowball after that, at that point, like, I would wake up some mornings um, and I'd see like three, four, five hundred people that have come into my bot like the night, like the day before, and it was crazy. I mean, like I, I've never seen that many people before, like that were like, oh yeah, I want to talk to you. That's cool. So it was really cool, like like kind of like, and and we haven't even like launched the product yet, and we're getting these people that are getting excited about like and engaging to them. with you on a regular basis, yeah. right? Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to part one of this episode. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Q&A and bonus content after the recording at sellerroundtable.com. Sponsored by the ultimate software tool for Amazon sales and growth, sellerseo.com and amazingathome.com.